Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to this new episode of the Light of Life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, we bless you, Father, for this time, for this uh, word you give us this Sunday, the day of the resurrection of your Son. Help us to make it ours, to let it uh, enlighten our life, guide us with your love. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. <clears throat> Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, <clears throat> Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, this uh, beautiful word is, uh, is probably one of the most uh, famous in the whole Gospel. The saying of Jesus, give to to Caesars what is Caesars and to God what is God's I think is one of the most well known by everyone even those who do not even know that this comes from the gospel that was actually said by Jesus in person the only problem is what does that really mean <clears throat> because in fact we know that there there are so many different interpretations to this saying of Jesus. Now, if you um, might have heard now that some people uh, interpret this uh, saying of Jesus as a sort of a um, legitimization of, of the separation between, let's say, the spiritual sphere and the temporal sphere in the world, so that basically uh, in, this is really said in modern terms, uh, sort of a separation between church and public government, where, you know, uh, the church and therefore God should be just, you know, enter into the spiritual realm of life, you know, and we should follow church, the church's teaching only regarding, you know, whenever you know, we go to church, we, we pray, we, you know, receive sacraments and all these liturgical things and things like this, but... <clears throat> This is another part of life, the one that we really live ordinarily you know, in, in our daily lives, you know, when we, you know, all things are concerned you know, with our job, with the money we earn, with the investments we do, with the affections, we, the relationships we, we, we have in our common ordinary life that in, in effect, in fact, are kind of subject to different set of rules which normally is given by the civil authority now. Uh, this is a very, a very normal, a very common but uh, big mistake that you know, sometimes we, we make all. This is to interpret the gospel with the eyes of our modern way of thinking, which is the worst thing that we can do because that, that could not be. In, in the time of Jesus, nobody would have ever interpreted what Jesus said in this way just because this separation was not even in view. Nobody had, could imagine something like this. They knew very well that there is one life, <coughs> not two kinds of lives. And this life is subject to one principle, okay? So, therefore, in those times, you know, if you want the, the civil authority, which was the emperor, exactly, living under the Roman Empire, uh, used, to, uh, used to rule every aspect of life, religious, spiritual, time, everything. At the same th time, the so-called religious authority, like the high priests in Israel, had to concern his own, his power was concerned with every single aspect of life, including what we today would uh, include in the civil realm, if you want. So, for sure, Jesus did not mean this. So, what did he mean, really, when he said? Now, one of the keys, which I think is very important, 
is in the world to use. No, that is, show me the coin, he said. No, it doesn't really answer the question of the Pharisees, which he understands that is done to trap him, right? So it's done with malice. So it's not just giving, you know, a sort of a, uh, an advice to people, you know, they should pay the taxes or not. No, that's not the point. It's much more profound as usually what Jesus says. He asks for the coin, <clears throat> that was used to pay the taxes and he sees and then the coin there is the image of caesar the face of him okay so he says who whose is this image and they tell him he's the emperor so the emperor you give to the emperors what he has given you so basically what the key of the of, of the, is the word image that jesus uses in this in this gospel in the, it was not a question of division between civil and religious authority. So much so, in the Roman coin, there was written the divine emperor. The emperor claimed to be divine. So the point was a sort of a competition. Who is really God in your life, in my life? Because there is only one God. And we have to choose one, not two. And the point is that everything... <clears throat> that is done by a man, though the man might claim to be a god, like the emperor used to do, but sometimes we also think that somehow we, we are like, or what we act as god in our life, think that everything is about us, everything depends on us, and that's exactly the way we claim to be god somehow. Jesus is saying, whatever you do, whatever human beings do, carry your image, which is a human image, which is not necessarily bad, but it's just human. Give to the emperor what he has given you, which are human things. So of course, and this is valid even today, Christians, as every other person in the world, use the instruments that other people, other men, those who are in authority and power, give us to live our life. You know, we all use the roads, we all use the uh, services that are uh, put in place by the government, we should pay for them? Of course. There's no doubt about that. They're human things. <clears throat> but Jesus says, give to God what is God's. Or in other words, using the same thing, the same um, uh, criteria uses for the coin, give to God whatever bear, bears God's image. Give to the emperor what bears the image of the emperor things money give to god what bears god's image and what is that bears god's image it's you and me brothers and sisters because we are made in the image of god in the image and likeness this is written in the first chapter of the bible in the book of genesis so basically what jesus is saying is re-establishing the right priorities i'm i am i bear the image of god what should I give back to God all myself? I am his. You are his. All my life is in God's hand. I can give to man what they give me, which is always far less. Things, things. Ultimately, those people are in, in authority will still do God's will and be used in a way, if you want to this, use this word, by God, by God, for his own purposes as well. But what is most important is you and me. What is more important for you in your life? People around you or the things you have? Because those things carry your image. They are important. They can be not necessarily the most important. People around us bear the image of God. Sometimes we, are, we, are, we think, no, where is God? I cannot see him. Why doesn't he show himself? Just look around. Look at the mirror. You see the image of God in yourself. Look at your wife. Look at your husband. Look at your children. They bear the image of God for you. Look at your workmates. Look at whoever you, have, you see around when you go around the streets. How many images of God do we have? Those people are the most important. That's what Jesus says. That's what, what is really want to tell us. Be careful which priorities you have in life. If your priority are your things, your house, your car, <clears throat> or anything else, your work, 
you are do you do not have the right priorities in life always people are more important than things and that's why the government can tell us what to can tell us what to do with our own things in some aspects of course like paying the taxes for instance but governments cannot tell us what to do with people that bear the image of God that's why for instance even if the government allows me just to make an example to give a pill to my old grandma that is dying because you know she's terminal she wants to die I still not allowed to do it I cannot kill the image of God even if the government tells me that I can do whatever I want with my own body my body bears the image of God it's not true that I can do whatever I want I need to do the will of God the one who gave it to me this is the profound uh, meaning of Jesus uh, uh, saying in this gospel right? it's for all of us what do I do with the image of God which is with me with my own person and with the purple around me and this is also a very consoling thing to know that we have an immense value much more than anything else we are far more important than anything else in the world God has given his life for me and for you and it is so important in a time in which many people suffer deeply because of what we call low self-esteem because we don't have we do not have enough but that's not what this is not what gives value to our life the value in our life is given by the fact that we bear god's image and it is this image that we need to bring back to god <clears throat> we give you thanks and bless your father for the, this word you give us help us help us to see the greatness of the work that you have done in us and in the people around us that we may give you praise always help us to have the right priorities in our life we ask all this through christ our lord amen in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen <clears throat>